Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be taking some time to add some damageable objects to our bow and arrow project. And we're going to be creating two examples. We're going to be creating a simple crate that'll basically react when we hit it with an arrow, as well as a more complex object that's consisting of multiple colliders. And all share the same health value, and will do different amounts of damage depending upon where you hit the target. And we have a lot to get through today, so let's go ahead and let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a few scripts. Depending upon what kind of target you want to make, if you want to create both, you'll need to make all of the scripts, but if you just want the crate, I have these two folders just to let you know which ones you'll need to make. So if you want to create a simple damageable object, you'll need to create a script just called crate and another script called idamageable that's going to be an interface. And then for the object itself, it's going to be pretty simple. I just have that empty crate script on there right now, as well as a box collider. And if you don't have a mesh for a crate, you can just use a simple cube. And then if we look at our target object here, that we'll be using the skeleton character. And for that, you'll need a number of different scripts. We'll have a script called body part, head, as well as target. And if we look at our root object here, we have our animator that contains an idle animation as well as an animation that's gonna trigger once we've done enough damage to our target. We have that target script. And then the big thing is getting all of these different colliders on our character. And I use Unity's ragdoll feature for doing that. If you have a character and you right click on it, go to 3D object, ragdoll, and then you want to drag in all of the transforms for your rigging into these fields here. And then once you've done that and hit create, it'll create all of these basic primitive colliders for you, as well as add some rigid bodies and configurable joints. For my example, I decided to take those off because I couldn't get the ragdoll to be pretty consistent. I'd get a lot of, I'd get a lot of results where the character would just clip to the floor and fly off into nowhere. So I decided to just have a simple animation instead. But if we close out of this window here and we explore our rigging a little bit, we'll click right here. And if you notice, we have this box collider as well as our body part script. And I've basically added the body part script to anywhere where it's just one of these basic colliders. And I have a specific one for the head that if we click on that, we have a sphere collider and our head script. And I specifically have one for the head because I want it to do double the amount of damage that if you hit it on the body somewhere. But if once you add your ragdoll and you need to edit your colliders, you can use the edit collider button here and it'll help you line up your colliders a little bit better if they're too large or too small. And I think that's about it for the scene setup. We're gonna go ahead and open up our arrow script as well as our crate and our idamageable script. And here we are within our arrow script, where the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually fixing a bug from my last video. And this is to solve the issue of sometimes arrows would just get stuck for no real reason. And this was because I wasn't setting the last position once the arrow was fired. Since our last position is initialized to zero, if there's a piece of geometry from vector 3.0 to wherever you were shooting from, the arrow would stop immediately. So what we need to do is create a start and reset our last position to the position of the arrow. And we just use transform.position, and that would fix that. Next, we're going to update our fixed update as well as our stop. We'll scroll down here. And the first thing that we're going to do is going to create a raycast hit so we can get some data from our line cast. And we'll just write out hit here. And we're doing this because whenever we want our arrow to hit an object, we're going to child that arrow to the object. So in this case for our character, if it's moving around, we want the arrow to stick into it basically. And to do that, let's go to stop. And we're gonna to wanna to pass in a game object that we're gonna be calling hit object. And so when we have a successful line cast and we call stop, we'll be accessing that recast hit the collider that it hit and the game object that it belongs to. And then we'll scroll down to stop where we're going to be calling a parent. So we'll do set the transform.parent of our arrow to the hit object transform. And there we go. And then we're going to be creating a new function called check for damage. where we're also going to be passing in a game object that we're going to be calling hit object. And then before I forget, we're going to want to call this and stop. So whenever our arrow hits something, 
We're going to child it to that object and we're going to disable physics and then we'll see if we can damage that object. I'll check for damage and our hit, we'll pass in our hit object here. All right, now let's go down to our check for damage. We'll scroll down so we can get a better look at this. And like I mentioned before, since we're going to be working with an interface here, it's going to give us the versatility of letting us mark any object or any mono behavior within our project as something that can be damaged. So whether it's a crate or a can or something like that, we'll be able to implement that iDamageable interface. And if you're not familiar with interfaces, I'd recommend looking up Unity's intermediate video on that. But before we write out this check for damage, you'll want to go to your iDamageable script and make sure that it's an interface instead of a class. All right, now let's go back to our arrow script. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is getting all of the mono behaviors on the object that we hit. So we'll write mono behavior and we're going to create an array here. And we'll just call it behaviors. And we'll be using our hit object dot get components of type mono behavior. And this is basically saying, hey, let's get all of the components that are currently attached to this object. And so we can go through all of them to see if they implement that iDamageable interface. And we'll have a for each loop, which is going to let us go through each of the mono behaviors within the array. And we'll check to see if the behavior is damageable. We'll want to get that behavior from the object. We'll need a cast here as well from our behavior. And we haven't necessarily written that damage functionality within our interface yet. So let's go ahead and go back to our iDamageable interface so we can do that. And when you're working within an interface, everything is going to be public by default. So we're not going to have any sort of accessor here. We're just going to write void damage and we'll be giving it an argument that's going to be an integer that we'll just call amount. And that's it. It's not going to have a body or anything like that. We'll be elaborating on that on each of the scripts that are going to be implementing this interface. And you'll, we'll be seeing that in the create script in just a second. So let's go back to our arrow and now we'll be able to write damageable dot damage and anytime our arrow is going to hit something, let's just do five damage. And then let's assume that we're also just going to have one behavior on each object that's going to implement this interface. So once we encounter something that we can do damage to, we're going to break out of the loop. And one thing I almost forgot, let's scroll back up to that start statement where we're setting our last position and we are just setting it in start here. But we're also going to want to set it when we actually fire the arrow because if we remember we're instantiating these arrows whenever we fire one. So as soon as it gets instantiated this last position is going to be set and when we fire it it's going to be using the last position for, from where it was instantiated where we don't want that. So let's take this, we'll copy it, we'll come down here and we'll place it in our fire function right at the very beginning. And that's pretty much it for our arrow as well as our interface. Let's go to our crate where the first thing that we're going to do is implement that interface that we just wrote. So we're going to write I damageable. And notice that we have this squiggly line under it because we need to implement that damage function. So write public void damage. We also need to match the arguments as well. And then once we do that, we'll notice that we no longer have the squiggly line under our interface. Now, what we need to do now is create some functionality for this crate to do. And for simplicity's sake, we're just going to make it turn red. And we'll get our mesh renderer. Get the material of that mesh renderer, its main color, and we'll just write color.red. So, so when we damage it, we'll just turn it red. And note that this crate doesn't have any health. No matter what hits it, it's just going to turn red. And this can work for a simple objects in your scene, like if you have a vase that you just want to shatter into some pieces, or a can that you may want to just apply physics to when you hit it, not everything in your scene is going to need health. But we will be tackling that in the next example. But before we do that, let's see if this works. So let's go back into Unity. And I'm going to hit play.
All right, and that seems to be working pretty well. Now let's open up the scripts for our more advanced target. So we have the body part script, the head script, as well as the target. And here we are within the body part script, where the first thing that we're gonna need to do is add the implementation for our damageable interface. And then we're gonna need to create a variable for the owner of this body part. And it's what's gonna let us know what we wanna damage once we hit this body part. So let's say we're hitting the leg of the character. We need to know, hey, which character does this belong to? So what health pool are going, we gonna to need to affect here? So it's gonna be a protected variable of type target that we'll just be calling owner. And this is gonna be set up from the target script itself. So you'll see it once we write it, it out in the target script. And we'll be creating a public void function that we'll just be calling setup where we type target and we'll call it new owner. And we'll just set it to the new owner. And then naturally we need to implement our damage function. Where we haven't written the take damage function for our target yet, so we'll write a comment here that just says damage owner because since all of these body parts are gonna be sharing that same health pool, we'll need to access it this way. But maybe for your project, each of the body parts may have their own health pool. So if you shoot an enemy in the leg enough times, that may disable that character to stop walking, but may not necessarily kill the target. But now that we've completed that, let's move on to our head, which it's gonna be pretty simple. One thing to take note of is that our head class is going to inherit from our body part. And that's because our head is also gonna to need to have an owner. But for the head, we will also need to implement our interface. And the reason that we have a script specifically for the head is when we are implementing this damage function. I probably should have copied and pasted this. <laughs> no worries. So we'll just write owner damage for now. So let's move over to our target script really quick and we'll write that take damage function so we can then fill it in within our body part scripts. And we'll write public void, take damage. We'll pass in an int that we'll call damage. There we go, now let's move back to our body part script where we're just gonna write owner.take damage and we'll just be passing in our amount. And then what we'll do here is we'll just copy this line, make sure we save that and we'll put it in our head as well but we're gonna take that amount that we're getting from the bow and we'll multiply it by two. We'll also add the new keyword here, so this will get rid of this for us. There we go. Now we just need to finish out our target script, where in my case, we're gonna create a couple properties for our health as well as a check to see if our target is alive or not. So we'll have a public int that we'll call health. We'll have a private set and a regular get, and we'll initialize this to 10. So if you remember, our bow is gonna do five damage. So if we hit a body part twice, that'll kill our target. But if we hit in the head, it'll be an instant kill. So we'll have a public bool that we'll call alive. And we'll do the same thing. And we'll, it'll initially be alive. And then we'll need a private reference to our animator. Now, if you don't have an animator, you won't need to do this. But this is my primary way of giving feedback. We'll initialize that to null. And then we'll have an awake where we'll be sending that animator. And then we'll need to create a function for getting our body parts. Because if you remember, we have those setup functions within our body part as well as our head since it's inheriting from it. and we're gonna get an array of body parts. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to get all of the components in the children of type body part. So this is gonna get all those scripts on the arms, the legs, as well as our head. And then we're gonna to want to go through each of those
and we're gonna wanna call the setup function on them. So we'll access that body part, setup, and we'll be passing in a reference to this target. And this ensures that all the components that are gonna be referenced to this target are gonna be childed to it. If we try to reference this in a different way, there can be that potential that you may access components that belong to a different target, which you probably don't want that. And then we'll go down to our take damage, where the first thing that we're gonna do is check to see if the target is alive. If, if it's not, then let's prevent the player from doing any more damage to it. But if the target is alive, it's got our health value. We'll do a minus equals to the damage that we're passing in. And then if our health is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna to wanna to kill our target, which we haven't written that yet. So we'll move down here a little bit. We'll write public void kill, where alive is going to be equal to false. And then for me, since I have an animator, you may have something else. I'm gonna set my Boolean value to dance. Since I couldn't find a decent death animation, so a dance seemed perfectly fine. So once I've done enough damage to my skeleton, he's gonna do a little dance for us. And then we'll call that kill function. All right, and that's pretty much it. So just to sort of go through this again, because I went through it pretty quick, is that each of the colliders on our target has this script attached to it, where we're gonna be passing a reference to it using the setup function. So when we damage it, we know which target we're damaging. And then since our head is inheriting from that body part, we're gonna be able to reuse this setup function. And then it'll have its own damage function where we're gonna to want to do double the damage that the bow is doing. And then within our target script, once it starts, we're gonna get our animator. We're gonna to want to call setup body parts. I'm really glad I went through that or we would have missed that. Which is gonna get all of the components that are currently attached to this target and it's gonna go through them and call that setup function. So we're saying, hey arm, hey leg, hey head, hey, you belong to me. So we all share the same health value. Once I die, we all die. And then we have that take damage function where if our character isn't alive, we don't want them to be able to take any more damage. But if they're still alive, let's subtract that damage value. We'll check to see if, if it's a kill. Once it's a kill, we'll flip that flag and we'll play the dance animation. And I made these two variables up here properties simply because they're two values that we're gonna to wanna to access most likely in other scripts to see if the target is alive or its remaining health, but we do only want our target itself to be able to set both of those values. All right, and I think that's about it. Let's go back into Unity and we'll see if this works. Let's hit play. All right, and there we go. If we hit our crate, it's gonna turn red. And then once we hit our target twice, it's going to be able to do 10 damage and then it's gonna play that dance animation. And that about does it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any problems or questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.